Okay, another review. And you're probably wondering what it is. I mean, judging by my shirt, you'd probably think, oh, I'm reviewing something Pink Floyd related, maybe. Yeah, that's not fucking happening. Um, <laughs> um, no, um, I was trying to think of, okay, what haven't I reviewed? I haven't reviewed an animated film yet. I mean... Well, we're waiting. You know, better late than never, I guess. Wait, which one do I review? Anything you want. Well, when people think of animation, you know, What's one of the first things that they think of? What's one of the first, like, studios that comes to mind? Disney, of course. Of course! Why wouldn't they think that? I mean, Disney's made, like, some of the best, like, animated entertainment of all time. You know, Peter Pan, The Jungle Book, Little Mermaid, Winnie the Pooh, 101 Dalmatians. And Sleeping Beauty, and crap like that. Well, for every bad movie Disney puts out, they put out dozens of classics. Or they sell out and become a corporate juggernaut that would have Walt rolling in his grave with dollar signs spinning around him. Well, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself by every company in existence, those motherfuckers. But things weren't always financially stable at Disney. In fact, their animation studio almost went bankrupt. Inconceivable! Yeah, I know. I mean, how would that happen? That's like unimaginable today. <laughs> but 34 years ago, there was a movie that was such a bomb, it actually almost bankrupted the studio. And that film was the 1985 animated film, The Black Cauldron. The Black Cauldron was loosely based on the book series Chronicles of Perdane by Lloyd Alexander. Disney got the rights for a film adaptation in 1973 and started work on the film, hoping to release it sometime in 1980 or 1981. However, release of the film was pushed back in 1984 due to difficulties with animating the human characters. In 1981, we instead got The Fox and the Hound, which, as far as I know, is not an adaptation of that book series, but it was good. The production remained in development limbo while ideas were being tossed around. Tim Burton was actually involved in some of the concept art for the film, but most of his stuff wasn't used because, well, you know, good old Tim Burton and his kooky imagination. Maybe they should have gotten him for, like, Alice in Wonderland or something. Wait, no, 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 no. Scratch that idea. The film finally got a release date set for Christmas of 1984, and a rough cut of the film had a test screening in California. The film ended up being too scary for most of the children in the audience as they were running out of the theater in terror before the movie was finished. Studio chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg requested the film be re-edited and the release date was changed to July of 1985. It was the first animated Disney film not to feature songs and also the first Disney animated film to get a PG rating due to its darker elements. Some speculate that if some of the deleted scenes were included, it would have gotten a PG-13 rating. At the time, it was the most expensive animated film ever made. The film ended up becoming a box office bomb and nearly bankrupted the animation department of Disney. It was referred to for years as the film that killed Disney and wasn't released on video until 1998, over a decade after its original release. The film still has a sour reputation, so you're probably expecting me to bash it, call it crap or something. No! I actually really enjoy this movie. Now, is it the best Disney film? No. Is it my favorite Disney film? No. Is it a bit 
underrated, overlooked, and unfairly maligned? Yes, it is. While I didn't grow up with this film, I do remember watching it as a kid once. We had a copy of it on VHS with a bunch of other Disney movies, and I watched it once. I remember not thinking much of it, except that I really liked the villain and the ending. The film opens with a narration from famous film director John Huston explaining that the Black Cauldron is a mysterious artifact that the Horned King wants to use to create an undead army that will help to take over the world. The main character is named Taran. He's a pig farmer who has dreams of one day becoming a warrior. Kind of like Luke Skywalker now that I think about it. He has a pig named Henwen that can see visions of the future and he ends up seeing a vision of the Horned King, which leads to Turan learning about the Black Cauldron. Henwen is captured by some dragons while Turan is daydreaming, and this leads both of them to the castle of the Horned King, where they are both held prisoner, with the Horned King hoping to use the pig's powers to find the cauldron. Along the way, they meet several other characters, including a furry character named Gurgi, who sounds sort of like a mix of Gollum and Donald Duck. They also meet Princess Elanwe and a bard named Fluter Flom, both names I probably mispronounced. Elanwe doesn't really act like a princess, then again, neither did Princess Leia. Why do I keep making all these Star Wars connections? Fluter Flom, he's sort of a comic relief, and he's played by Nigel Hawthorne, a renowned British actor. You know, his character's fine, you know. He's a good voice actor, has a few moments where I chuckled, you know. They all join together to find the cauldron and stop the Horned King. I think it's an interesting movie. Good animation, interesting story, fun characters. It has this interesting atmosphere to it that I like. I don't really see why there are that many complaints about it being too dark though. I mean, I mean Disney had already done an adaptation of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and that scared me more as a kid than this movie ever did. The film was mostly remembered for its climax, which features the Horned King resurrecting the dead to create an army. And this was easily my favorite scene as a kid. <laughs> Several scenes were cut, which depicted rather gruesome death scenes. I kind of would like to have seen these included, although if they were, I probably wouldn't have gotten a PG rating. The film's plot is a bit generic and derivative of other fantasy stories. Got to go on a quest to find this thing and stop that guy so he won't be able to do that thing. You've heard it before from J.R.R. Tolkien, George Lucas, and all the people those guys probably ripped off. But it moves at a good pace. The animation is good with a lot of interesting new techniques that hadn't been used before by Disney. Some CGI and photographic effects were used, which was revolutionary at the time. Now that I think about it, the movie sort of reminds me of Legend, the Ridley Scott movie, which I think came out, I think that might have came out the same year, actually. You know, you have a fantasy film with a hero who has to stop a horned villain played by a great British actor. In that film's case, that villain was Darkness, played by Tim Curry. Which brings me to uh, probably my favorite part of the movie, which is the villain. You know, that was one thing I enjoyed as a kid, still enjoy now, was the villain, the Horned King. I mean, just look at that design. He looks like a great horned owl mixed with Skeletor. <laughs> hey man, meow! You know, just... Except unlike Skeletor, he has a really cool, intimidating voice provided by the great John Hurt, one of my favorite actors. May he rest in peace. Yes, my soldiers. Soon the Black Cauldron will be mine. Its evil power will course through my veins. Whenever he walks into a room, he has this great, like, presence to him. And his introduction is, like, really cool, too. He's also got this, like, little goblin henchman and Creeper, that's kind of funny too. I liked him. He's like always like trying to make it so his master isn't angry, you know, because he doesn't want to get killed or something. Actually sounds kind of familiar now that I think about it. Don't know why. I actually like Gurgi too. He's this like kind of interesting character. He's this little like furry creature that lives in the woods. They're not really sure whether to trust him or not, you know. And he ends up, like, 
being kind of the hero at the end, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm not even sure what he is, though. Like, he, he like, I don't know if he's just a really furry, like, vagrant that just lives in the woods or something, or if he's, maybe he's an alien. I don't know. He does kind of sound like E.T. now that I think about it. E.T. wants Apple. The main characters, eh, they're, they're kind of generic, to be honest. You know, Turan, he's the generic hero, some average person who goes on a wild adventure, meets strange creatures, does brave stuff along the way. Heard it before, Bilbo and Frodo Baggins, Luke Skywalker, blah, 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 blah. And I think that is one main criticism people have of the film. The main characters, granted, Turan isn't a great character. Lonway isn't much better. Although I do kind of like the way she says her name. I think the film is redeemed by the animation and the supporting characters, who are much more entertaining and interesting. Honestly, that was the case with a lot of animated films. When I was a kid, I always thought the supporting characters and the villains were a lot more entertaining. You know, I didn't watch Star Wars for the main characters. I watched it for Darth Vader and Yoda. <laughs> you know, it was the case with most Disney films too. Actually, now that I think about it, I mean, I thought the villains were the most entertaining part: Captain Hook, Shere Khan, Cruella Deville, Scar, Hannibal Lecter. You know, great villains in those movies. And the plot isn't the most original. Gotta stop an evil sorcerer from taking over. But thankfully, it, I think it's done well, you know. I think the villain's interesting. I think the animation's good. I really like the music score by Elmer Bernstein, you know. Although his score does sound a little similar to Ghostbusters at points, you know. He did the score for that film, too. There are problems with it, you know. I think the action scenes are kind of few and far between. You have the scene with the dragon, which is all, you know, which is fine, you know, the dragon looks cool. Other than like a few scenes, there's not really much action. It's mostly exposition. Granted, I think it's an interesting looking world and I like the weird characters that are in there. You know, I think that makes up for some of its faults. What I can say is that as far as fantasy films go, it's decent, you know, it's not the best fantasy film I've ever made. That would probably be like Something like The Princess Bride or Highlander. But it's pretty good, you know. It's not a masterpiece, but I think it's a lot better than most people say it is. The film was not a huge success, but thankfully it didn't destroy the studio. Instead, Disney put out The Great Mouse Detective, which did decently. And then the Disney Renaissance started with The Little Mermaid, one of their biggest hits, which was regarded as Disney's comeback. And the studio has managed to mostly maintain a streak of financial success. Mostly. So how is the Black Cauldron remembered? Not very well, actually. It's kind of obscure now, and the people who do know about it don't really like it or regard it as one of the better Disney films. I mean, it has gotten a bit of a fan base over the years, so at least it finally found an audience. I mean, I don't consider it one of the best Disney films, but I do think it's a lot better than people say it is. You know, I enjoy it. You know, it's an interesting artifact from a bygone era. And hey, if you don't like this movie, at least it indirectly gave us the Disney Renaissance, you know, which gave us classics like The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Hunchback of Notre Dame, you know, which are all great films. And hey, for people who hate Disney films, this film almost ended them completely, so you should love this film. <laughs> As for me, I liked it. I thought it was interesting for what it was. And if you have a problem with that, then, well, that's your problem. Seriously though, I should just fucking review Pink Floyd or something. Anyway.